What's up guys, I'm Christian from 1A Auto. I'm usually the guy that's behind the camera filming and editing the videos you watch, but today I'm gonna be working on this 370Z. I'm a car enthusiast too. I like fixing and upgrading cars. So I'm gonna show you how to install these test pipes on this 370Z. So to start, let's bring the car up in the air. All right, so now that the car is up in the air, let's assess the situation. As you can see, these are the two catalytic converters that are currently on the car, and that's what we want to replace with the test pipes. So the test pipes, as you may or may not know, are basically just cat delete pipes. They're a hollow pipe uh, that replaces the catalytic converter and makes it so that the exhaust can flow a lot better. It removes all the restrictions, but it is not legal. So you have to do this at your own risk. This will not pass inspection. This will not allow you to comply with all the emissions regulations. So like I just said, you do this at your own risk. The rest of the exhaust on this car is also performance exhaust made by NVIDIA. And we're gonna add to that by installing our two NVIDIA cat delete pipes. So at the back, that's the front of the car, this is the back. We have two bolts over here that we have to undo. They're a little crusty, but that's okay. Two bolts on this side as well. And then the hard part is actually gonna be right up there. You can see that there's one bolt on top that we can easily access. There's another one on the bottom, which is a stud on the other side of, you can see it on this side a lot better. So there's three bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom, well two on the top because there's one on the right side, one on the left side, one on the bottom. All right, so seeing how rusty these are, I'm gonna try and break them loose as well as this bracket right here, we're gonna have to take this down. But like I said, seeing how rusty they are, I'm not even gonna try and use a wrench or a, a socket with a breaker bar. I'm just gonna go straight for pneumatic impact because I'm not removing them right now. I'm, ho I'm hoping to just break them loose because I want the whole exhaust still held up in place while trying to remove those top bolts up there. Um, that way it doesn't wobble around and uh, maybe bend any brackets or the pipe. Um, so I'm gonna try and loosen these up as best as I can. If they break, whatever, they break. We have all new hardware that came with the kit, so that's fine. Um, I might spray them with some penetrating fluid if they don't budge, but I'd like to just give them a quick zap and see if they at least want to move. As always, eye protection, ear protection, and gloves. Oh, and by the way, these are 14 millimeter nuts. My advice is don't try a 12 point socket. Make sure you use a six point socket because you don't want a chance rounding the, uh, the nuts off because then, well, then you're really gonna have a heck of a job. Well, if your socket gets stuck up there, just get the whacking stick. It's that easy. See, these are a little tricky here because you have these springs on the NVIDIA exhaust that they basically act like a clamp and they adjust, expand and contract with heat, I'm assuming. And the bracket for the springs is kind of in the way for these inner bolts. All right, so on this particular, in this particular situation, for some reason, all the bolts are 14s, except for this one right here, which seems to be a 15. So let's get a 15. Even though a 15 seems kind of loose, I'm still gonna use it and see what happens. Well, that worked, it broke it loose. So let's switch back to a 14 and take care of these right here. All right, so now that we've broken this one free, let's try and break this one free. Okay, so it looks like we have to use half inch. The question is how to keep the socket in there. What if we adjust? That's better. There we go. All right, so now that we have all of these broken free, Let's get to the 
O2 sensors, take those out. Let's get a O2 sensor socket on there. And uh, this one's too wiggly. Let's get another ratchet. Okay, let's try this one. There we go. All right, broke that one loose. Let's do this one. And off it comes. All right, now that we have them broken free, let's continue with the, uh, with the rest of the exhaust. All right, so let's get that top one broken free. All right. All right, so this O2 sensor is kind of in my way, so I'm going to disconnect it. Let's take this one out completely. There we go. I'm going to put this in a safe place because I don't want to break it and I also want to remember which side it went on. I want to make sure I put it back on the same side it came from just just in case. All right, and now take the other one out as well. If you didn't know, the oxygen sensor socket is a uh, 22 millimeter. So once you break it loose, you can, uh, you can loosen it further with a 22 millimeter open-ended wrench. If you have one, this one, uh, this sensor is kind of difficult to unthread. Uh, not sure why it's stuck in there. The other one came out really easy, so, and they both look like they're the same age, so, I don't know, maybe this one's, yeah, this one's a little more crusty, maybe it was over-tightened, who knows. Uh, but we'll put some anti-seize on those threads when we put it back in just to prevent this from happening in the future. All right, so now that we have this extension on, let's continue and loosen up that bolt right there, which is the top right bolt on the driver's side. 14 millimeter again, or still. All right, that one came off easily. Okay, so you may or may not be able to see, but if you go through the wheel well, you actually get a pretty good view at that bottom bolt. The lighting isn't the greatest, but there it is right there. So if you go through here, and I'll show you, but if you put your ratchet right between the control arm and the frame, with a uh, 14 millimeter deep socket, you can actually break that free. Hopefully, uh, a 3 8 will do it for you. I'm gonna try it 3 8 If not, I'm gonna have to go up to a half inch. Hopefully, I don't have to remove the wheel to get a, a large half inch breaker bar in there. Same for this side. And I'm showing you now because you can't really see once I, once I get in here, there's no way I can film this. I'm gonna try and put a GoPro in there. But so on this side, you may or may not be able to get it from down under here, but there's really not much wiggle room to move the ratchet around. So I think I'm going to do the same thing on this side, come in from the wheel well area and uh, put a 14 millimeter deep on there, try to loosen it up that way. Then we can go on top and remove that last bolt. All right, so now we can insert our ratchet through the wheel well, place it on the stud, bolt, nut, whatever it is, and then, then go for it. And be gentle because you don't want to strip it. Think of that one. I think you can see what happened there. Steering column's in the way, so when you back out on that bolt, just be careful. All right, so remove that one. Do the same thing on the other side. What, you want me to show you? All right, fine, I'll show you. All right, so same thing, get your ratchet and a 14 millimeter socket. Put it on there and pull down. Hopefully it breaks free. 
There we go. There we go. As you can see, we got these two bolts from the bottom taken care of. There's this one right here, and that one, same for the other side. Everything else is broken loose. O2 sensors are disconnected. So I think it's time to go up top, find a way to get to these last two bolts, or nuts, I should say, and, uh, and then remove the cat. All right, so now with the car back on the ground, uh, in the engine bay, you can get to the bolts without removing anything, but I think for visual purposes, not just for video, but even if I were to do this without recording it, I would probably still want to take the intake off, and that would just give you a lot more room to see where you're putting the socket, because it's really hidden in there. So you want to make sure you know what you're doing, and you want to make sure you get a good grip on those bolts, because if you strip them, well, you're screwed. So we're going to take this strut brace off and then remove the intakes. I'm just going to remove these two hose clamps right here, pull it off and set it aside. Uh, I don't want to disturb any wiring or anything like that. So to begin, we're going to remove that little plastic piece right there, two body clips, and the weather stripping pops off and then we can remove these six, uh, what look like 14 millimeter bolts, three on each side. All right, so let's take these off. I'm gonna set them aside right here just so I don't lose them in the engine bay. And this should pop right off, I think. Let's remove this to get more access. Yep, it does. There we go. All right, so two 14 millimeters here, all right. I'm going to put the gun on a lower speed. All right, I'm going to set these aside right here where the body clips are. And then we can take off all the other bolts. I'm going to set these aside on the side that they go to and lift up and take this out. I'm going to get an 8 millimeter and undo these clamps. I'm just going to loosen them a little and then this should slide off. There we go. Now. I'm going to disconnect this just so I don't accidentally bump it. And I'm going to set this aside right there. Oh, I guess there was, a, um, there was a vacuum hose right here. So we can't forget to reconnect that once we're done. And let's do the same thing on this side. Uh, mass airflow, move the wiring aside. And there is another vacuum hose right here on this side. So make sure you disconnect that from underneath and then just wiggle it right out. So on the driver's side, we're gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench and try to disconnect it's upside down. There we go. So I'll show you in a second once I get it off, but basically there's a, a bolt holding on the intake onto, the, onto a bracket here which on the other side, the bolt wasn't there. Obviously, if your car has the stock intake, this is an aftermarket intake, but if it has the stock intake, that's the bolt that I was talking about. Whoops, don't drop it. If your car has a stock intake, then obviously this is going to be a slightly different process, but with uh, the uh, k and intake, then you just drop all your stuff. All right, so once the intakes are off, then you can see the uh, bolts a lot better. Zoom in. So that's the one on the driver's side, right there. The uh, steering column's a little bit in the way, but I think we can get around it. And then on the passenger side, if you look down right there, this one, there's a lot more room to uh, work with. So 14 millimeter, 
Let's take those out. So for the passenger side, I have a whole set of extensions that I put together. Hopefully that reaches down there. Actually, I'm gonna put the socket on first and make sure it's on there tight because you don't wanna strip that bolt. If you do, then you're screwed. Let's see. Yeah, that did it. All right, so we got one off. Oh, there's plenty of room in here without the intake. This one's not even rusty. Yeah, of course this one's not. Okay, so on the driver's side, this is the only view I can give you because there is literally just enough room for me to get the socket with the extensions in there. So what we're going to do is, and your view might just suddenly be blocked as I put my uh, extensions in there. All right, so trying to put the extension in there can be tricky, but is doable. Just, uh, just make sure that you're on that bolt. Like I said, you don't want to strip it. Yeah. And then I guess just go for it. Once, you, once you're sure it's on there tight, make sure you hold it just in case. So for this job, swivel sockets are going to be your best friend, uh, as well as extensions and uh, some other tools, obviously. If you have some long wrenches, that can also be very useful. All right, so I need a, a thin-walled socket for this. I'm gonna try 3 8 thin-wall swivel. Hopefully, this will work. This is the last bolt. After this, we can take the cats out. All right, so I'm not sure what happened there. I don't know if the bolt broke or something, but after much trial and some error, uh, I think I got it because it's spinning. So let's see if the magnet can pick it up. If it can pick it up, then maybe the bolt broke, which is fine. Like I said at the beginning, we have new bolts. The problem is it wants to stick to everything but the bolt. Okay, so the bolt is not coming off. How about, let's do this, let's jack the car up again, put it up in the air, see if we can uh, do anything from underneath. All right, now that we have everything out on the top, let's go back on the bottom, get our 14 millimeter socket and take everything out. All right, so the next and last step is to undo these two mounts that hold this brace uh, for the exhaust onto the transmission. All right, make sure the bushings don't get stuck up here. And now we should be able to pry these off. Oh, I forgot that I never removed this bolt up here because apparently the nut on this side was spinning. I can't hear anything. So the nut on this side is spinning, and that prevented the bolt from coming out because it was spinning with the nut. I'm gonna have to hold the bolt, or unthread the bolt, and hold the nut at the same time, or... There we go. There's one. I can't really show you because I can barely see. You get a wrench on there or something. Oh, I got it. So if you get a wrench on there, hold it with your finger from the other side and just unthread the nut. Fairly difficult to process because there's really not much room up there. And the only thing you can do is just keep wrenching at it slowly. Even though it's very loose, I can move it with my fingers. I really can't move it with my fingers because I don't have room to move my fingers. If that makes any sense. I know it probably doesn't. All right, there goes the nut. I'll take the bolt out after. Let's take this out. And cat number two, removed. So, as you can see, this is the, uh, that was the bolt. All right, so here we have the end result. Cats are on the ground. Cat delete pipe is ready to go in.
There's uh, quite, quite a bit of rust there. It's only surface rust, but I'm gonna try and take a wire brush to it and clean it up. That way the gasket has the best possible surface to seal up against. Um, those studs, even though the new exhaust came with bolts to replace the studs, I'm gonna leave them in there because they're, I, I think they wanna stay in there more than they wanna come out. So I think if I try to take them out, they're either gonna break, they're in there, they're not rusty. They're, well, rusted in there, but not rusty on the threads. So I think, I think it's better if they stay there. And then I'm also gonna clean up this surface where the old gasket was on both sides. All right, so after you've established which one is passenger and which one's driver's side, place your gasket on here. And like I said, I'm keeping that stud in there because it doesn't want to go anywhere. It's most likely either going to break or strip if I try to take it out. So I'm just going to leave it. The new nuts that were supplied with the kit are actually able to thread on the stud. So even more of a reason to keep it in. Quickly grab another bolt, <coughs> thread that one on to the bottom because it's the most accessible one. So the uh, bolt holes aren't quite lining up. Let's see why. Oh, I see why. So if you look at this gasket, you can actually see it has one edge that's curved, another one that's straight. And on the pipe, this edge, the inner edge that goes on the train or towards the transmission is curved. This is flat. So make sure you put the gasket on the right way around. So let's try this again. So the gasket on the driver's side, like I said, has the curved edge towards the transmission. On the passenger side though, it's not towards the transmission, it's actually uh, the same way. So the curved edge will go closer to the frame and the flat part or the flat edge get goes on the transmission side. So, but you'll know if you confuse it because the bolts won't line up. So they're slightly offset. So you can't really put it on the wrong way. Okay, so it might take a little convincing and maneuvering of the exhaust pipe to get them to line up. That's okay, the uh, hole on the test pipe is actually a wider hole so that you have some room to move it around. So I think it's all planned. It was meant to be this way. Okay, so next step is to reinstall this, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, cross-member exhaust support thing. And it has a rubber bushing on top that looks like this. So it has this uh, part that sticks out of it. And that will go down into the hole of the support brace. But it also has a bushing and a washer on the bolt on the other side. So basically it sandwiches like this and the little spacer in the middle makes up for the gap that this brace uh, create. So I'm going to thread one on slowly and by hand. This uh, transmission case is aluminum, so really you don't want to cross thread these, otherwise it's not going to be a fun, fun day. So again, spacer bushing on top, bolt through the bottom and tighten it up. Now you saw me use an air gun to undo everything, but I'm not using an air gun to put it all back together because Everything is aluminum on this car, and I don't want to risk stripping anything or breaking anything. So I'm actually going to take a ratchet and do it all by hand. Tighten this up. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. I'm just going to snug it so that this uh, support brace or bracket, whatever you want to call it, stays in place. Then I'm going to put the bolts on the actual exhaust. 
but I'm not going to tighten those either, then I'm actually going to tighten the exhaust up to the manifold and the rest of the pipe, and then I'm going to tighten up the uh, bolts for the support because I want the pipe to seat itself on the two flanges, up on the manifold, as well as down on the pipe. And this is just here to support it and keep it in that position. So if I bolt this on first, I might not be able to move the pipe to center it the way I need it to be. So let's get these started. I'm actually gonna put these going upwards. So this car is lowered, not sure if you noticed or not. And because it's lowered, I don't want bolts sticking out towards the bottom. You never know, you hit a bump, you hit a pothole by accident, and it, it rips this bolt clean off, um, and then it's gonna be hard to either unthread it or maybe it breaks something. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it stick up towards the top on both sides. Like I said, I'm just hand tightening these. I'm not even, not even snugging them by hand, I'm just bottoming out the nut, that way it's on there and ready to be tightened, but not tightened yet. If you have an air gun that you know the power of, or maybe even an electric gun, you can go ahead and use it as long as you are confident that you're not over tightening the bolts, stripping the threads, ruining the transmission case, ruining these new bolts, your call. All right, so now that we have these uh, exhaust mounts in place, I'm gonna go ahead and with a 14 millimeter swivel and a long extension, I'm gonna tighten up these bolts, or nuts I should say. Uh, it looks like the nut bolt on the other side is not spinning, so that's great because I don't need to go in there with a wrench and hold it. I'm gonna snug them up evenly because I want the gasket to seat and seal up. I don't want any exhaust leaks. If the bolt on the other side does spin and doesn't wanna stay, you can always just use a wrench. I believe they're gonna be 14 millimeters as well. All right, so now that's snug. I'm gonna uh, tighten them up. Obviously, there's no torque specs. Just don't, don't go crazy. Oh, all right, so this bolt is spinning. I'm gonna need to put a 14 millimeter wrench in there, uh, but I'll snug up the stud. I can't snug up the stud because I need a deep socket for that. So I'm gonna snug up this other top one. And you could probably tell, at this point, we don't need to go to the top anymore and uh, access the bolts from there because we can access them from here around the test pipe. So that's cool. All right, once you get a 14 millimeter wrench on there, just make sure it stays, doesn't fall off. And then get your socket on and start tightening it up. You don't want to go crazy tight. Obviously, you can always adjust it later, just, uh, just make it snug with the 3 8 and that should be enough. Now let's get a deep socket, get to that stud right there. So my deep socket, for, unfortunately it's not a swivel, but it fits. And now let's just snug up this, the nut on the uh, stud. So now I've removed my extension, I'm gonna use the 14 millimeter socket with a wrench and tighten these up. So, as you can see, it's a lot easier to get to these bolts from here and uh, getting to them from this side. Sure, it might have been possible, but why not make it even easier? So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this extension swivel socket thing because it's kind of annoying when I'm trying to keep the uh, ratchet from spinning, bending. All right, so I'm gonna use the exhaust as a leverage point for the wrench. I'm gonna snug up one side. I'm not gonna go super tight with it because I want to seat this side first. Well, I wanna seat both sides at the same time, but I wanna make sure that the gasket squeezes flat on those, uh, on those flanges. I have some personal experience with exhaust leaks in my car. So every time I work on exhaust uh, systems, I'm, I make sure that I do everything I can to prevent leaks so that whoever's car it is can be happy. All right, that one's tight. That one's tight. All right, same thing on this side. Snug up the bolts. 
one side at a time. The other reason you don't want to use an air gun is because if you don't know the air gun and you accidentally put too much power through it, you can actually strip the bolts and that would just be not a fun day to have to buy new bolts when you already have new bolts. All right, so I'm gonna go in and tighten this stud. And I'm gonna do the bottom. Oh, need a swivel for that one. Again, just hold, hold on to the other side and hopefully it won't spin once it grabs. These nuts are locking nuts uh, as well as the bolt. So, so what that means is they have little uh, tabs that stick, not tabs, but uneven grabbing points that basically will bite into the metal as you tighten them. So hopefully once those start to bottom out on the flange, you don't have to hold it anymore and uh, it'll basically hold itself as you tighten it. And it looks like, looks like this side is doing exactly that. All right, so next is gonna be to tighten up this bracket. Again, like I said, I'm gonna do it by hand. And I'm just gonna make it snug. That's a wonderful sound. Now that that's tight, we can go ahead and tighten these. It didn't come with any washers or anything. Um, so, I, and I, I'm not gonna put any just because these are lock bolts and lock nuts and I don't want to interfere with the locking mechanism or action of the bolt and the nut um, because if I put a washer in that's basically going to cancel out that that action of locking and I think even though the flange or the washer part of the nut is not not too wide I think it's wide enough to grab onto this metal plate um, and I, I wouldn't worry about it. All right, so make these tight and double check them. Now let's put the O2 sensors back in so we can go up on top and reassemble everything in the engine bay. All right, so as you can see, I put a little bit of anti-seize on this O2 sensor, um, maybe a little too much, but don't get any on the sniffy part, if you know what I mean. Um, just put a light coat on the threads just to ensure that the O2 sensor is not gonna get stuck on there and then thread it on to your new extended um, O2 sensor bung. Now, if you didn't know, uh, these are extended out so that it sniffs less of the exhaust that comes through this pipe and the less it smells, the less it'll know that there's no catalytic converter in there. So you actually do want it to not sense as much exhaust. And hopefully if you didn't know that, now you do. All right, so let's put this back up here, clip it onto this. Uh, like I said earlier, I kept the left one on the left and the right one on the right. Not that they're any different, but just in case. All right, so once you put the other side in as well, just take a 22 millimeter wrench or the oxygen sensor socket and just give it a little snug, not too much, just, just a little bit so that you can seat that washer that's in there. Um, make sure the wires aren't tangled in any way or twisted. You want to make sure they're all routed nicely. And um, I guess that's it for down here. Now we can take one last look, make sure everything's tight and then lower the car and remount everything up in the engine bay. And let's go for a test drive. All right, now we're back on the top of the engine and let's get the intakes back in place. Let's start with this one. Oh, I forgot to get the clamp. So let's see if we can find it. All right, so let's remount this clamp, make sure it's going the right way. Maneuver the intake back on here. Get the eight millimeter. and snug this back up. Let's re-thread this bolt on that was holding the, the intake to the air box. And obviously don't forget to plug in your mass airflow sensor. All right, 
place that on there. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. Now let's put the strut brace or strut bar, whatever you want to call it, back in place. And this is as simple as lining it up with the studs. Slide it underneath the weather strip and then place it down. It's mounted with two bolts and one nut. Um, I'm still not going to take my air gun to it just because this is not my personal air gun, so I'm not sure how powerful it is, and I don't want to chance stripping the threads. So I'm just going to do it by hand. It's a 14 millimeter socket. Okay, I, I'll use the gun for a little. Okay, so now that I bottomed them out with the electric impact, I'm going to take the ratchet and snug them really tight. Keep in mind, I'm only using a 3 8 ratchet, not a big half inch, so I'm not making them crazy tight. Replace this plastic piece. Replace the, what the? Replace the weather strip. Put the uh, push clips back in and then snug down the other side. So now that everything is back together up on top, close the hood and go for a test drive.
Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.